This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. We're on. And today's guest, we've got Tommy Mallet back for part two. How are we, brother? Amazing. Amazing. I feel absolutely, since the last time we spoke four years ago, I feel like, do you know when I just walk through the door and see you, it mm-hmm. all come back to me. Like the good, the bad, and yeah. where I was at that time, yeah? And how quick it's gone. But then also with it is the lessons I've learned along the way has been unbelievable. I'm like, I feel so prepared for the next stage of my life now. We're there, when I've done that first one, I was angry. I was like, I just, I wanted it so badly. I was willing to lose everything while I was doing it and didn't really understand life then, man. So I was out there preaching on a podcast about my life and I didn't know fuck all. When now I've been through it, really been through it and I've learned so much. That was the start of our journey, but we'd all already been through our journey. And like you say, we came through a lot and over four years, we've not stopped. We said that four years ago, where we were going to take things, we've took things to new heights. There's been roller coasters, ups and downs, madness, laughter, cries, tears, pain. This is life, I think. I think everybody goes through it. Mm. I think with our mindsets, we're always reaching for new heights, new goals. Everything's limitless. More pressure, more problems, more money. Does it bring happiness? I've soon fucking realised that. Everything I've craved, everything I've searched for, I've ticked all the boxes mm. and it made us more battle more now than I was at the start of the journey when I was going through my mess. Yeah. But it's good to see you. No good doubt we'll create you. fucking magic today. Every time we connect, it's powerful, yeah. it's magical. And yeah, we're just two boys just trying to fucking... Do you know what? Stuff in life. You just said this there, yeah, that um, about when you get it and you just it don't fulfill it. You don't feel fulfilled, do you? So you start getting it in and you just feel like fucking hell. I thought it was going to feel different to this, yeah. And that made me do a lot of searching and made me really start wondering what was going on because I'd be doing the next thing. It was the next craze, and then I sat down with someone. I was like, "You need inner peace, man. Without inner peace, you got nothing." So I started searching for that. I feel like a different person, man. Four years ago, your mallet was still taking off. You took it levels, levels, levels. Yeah. How's it been so far? Well, I took it to where I said I was going to go. But it was... It, I I always thought, yeah, like when, when building, that that was it and that was my life forever. So there was good parts and bad parts of that because I always thought... Yeah, I love doing this and it's my baby. But at the same time, I thought, fuck, I'm stuck here. So when something bad would happen, I'd think, oh, I can't take this no more. So I was a lot of the time of building a company, I was just battling so much. But for me, I was so driven to take it to where I said I was going to take it. Nothing else mattered. So I just find myself constantly grafting and constantly pushing through barriers. And yeah, I was winning. No, I can't say I weren't winning. I, like, I cracked America after seeing you. I learned so much about myself in doing so, but with doing it, like a lot of money come, 
And when a lot of money comes, you become a target. And then the more fame you get off the back of something, you become even bigger a target. And the next thing you know, you spend a lot of your time dealing with shit, which you never used to have to deal with. And for me, I was just wanted Mallet to just be Mallet and I wanted it to be huge. But then I had leeches onto me that just started leeching me worse and worse and worse. And there comes a point where things happen and you think, fucking hell, man, I need to offload this because it's getting painful. Because before, the, the, the love for the brand, what I had, yeah, made me just forget about anyone around me and I didn't think of anything else. But when you're actually, like, and all the leeches, you sort of just, you just carry it. But then it comes a bit heavy, man. And you start, when you have a kid and you've got your family around you and you're constantly stressing, you just end up fucking thinking, you know what, I can't do this no more. And I got to that point, I think, after your podcast probably didn't help me, I'm going to be honest with you. Thank you. No, it helped me in so many ways, but it didn't help me in situations where people actually knew the real me and people really started accepting me. So it changed my life because people, it was the first time I ever spoke about who I was as a person. So all of a sudden I've got people in vans, like, yes, and they loved my story. So it, it was a relief for me to tell people who I am, but then it gave me like this different sort of fame that I never had before. Well, I was just, I was on Taui before and I was like a reality star, but then nah, everyone's like, whoa, that geezer's actually a sick businessman. And they started looking up to me a bit more on that. And with that, it started causing a resentment for people around me, I think. Jealousy? Yeah. What is winning to you? Um, I've had two different, two different types. Winning was when I was trying to get to the destination of like becoming a multimillionaire and buying the houses and the cars. And then nah, winning is waking up every morning and being happy and doing something that like I love and being able to see my little boy before he goes to bed. That's winning, man. Like, because of when, when you've had it all and then you've lost a lot at the same time, having it all doesn't help you at the time, especially when it's like loss that you can't help. For example, when we lost the baby in April last year, there was nothing that could bring that baby back, but I had loads of money around me. But my, my missus didn't care how much money I had around me. She was so fucked off of it. She was so bad. And I remember sitting there thinking, how can I help her? What can I do? Is there anything I can do to, to make this any bit better? And there wasn't. So then it showed me everything I'd been out there trying to grab couldn't help in that situation. So me being there and being in a good mindset is the only thing that could help. So for me, winning is keeping a strong mindset, staying away from anything that I get addicted to, Staying away from partying, um, being there for my family, and just doing the right thing. That's what winning is for me right now. How was it when your missus lost the baby? Horrendous, man. Horrendous. It's that, it's, I've spoke about it so many times. It don't, just don't get better, man. It don't get better because I'd, where I'd had this perfect little boy, and he's still the best thing that ever happened to me, you sort of, when you found out she's pregnant, you think, you sort you look at him and think that's it's the next version of him so you sort of visualize what the baby is and she lost the baby at three months and we was getting scans every week to try and fix the problem what was, was going on it was a chromosome issue so we got attached to this baby and like because obviously my positivity and how, how, how I've always lived I'm like everything's gonna be fine everything's gonna be fine until they, until they tell you it's not gonna be fine you think fuck what next so for me I felt I dealt with it really well because I had to, but watching what it done to Georgia was, uh, I'm, I'm scarred by it, man. I, I, I could never be the same again, I don't think. Never. I just think it was just so painful to see someone you love just have it all to then bang. Because Georgia's always been good. Georgia's always just been positive. She don't really care about too much. This was the first thing I ever see hit her and she took it so bad. And it's been a year of like trying to build our lives back up. And I feel like I'm really proud of where we took it and how we'd sort of dealt with it. But at the same time, people used it against me. And that's when shit started getting bad for me business-wise. Because it was the first time in, in 10 years that I'd ever took time out. And then I started looking at what I've built around me and seeing people was coming in. It was supposed to be helping me, but taking a piss out of me, using my like what, what I was going through against me, I believe. And it was the only time I'd showed a little bit of weakness in my life. I'd never showed weakness and because I refused to. Apart from the bits and pieces I'd done in the early days on the depression before I knew what everything was. I feel like by me losing this baby, I showed a side to me which was vulnerable and people jumped on it. 
and it made my life hard, man. I thought the time where I needed people is when they really turned on me. Yeah. And I'm not going to get into what happened and who I've had problems with, but I, I've got a lot of companies, as you know. I'm not saying which one it was I've had a problem with, yeah? But I'll give it all for this one. And I built a big team of people who needed it. I didn't just go and just go and get people because they were good at their jobs. I'd sit there and talk to people. People would go, I, haven't, I don't see my kids enough. Um, my job's not letting me do it. And I would like feel sorry for them because I've got a boy now. And then go, no problem. I'll look after you. You can work from home. You can do this and that. And made people's lives easier because I thought it was the right thing to do. But then they're the same people that turn on you. They're the first people that turn on you. So that sort of stuff has been tough, man. And... I um I feel like was, everything happens for a reason and I'm slowly getting over what's happened, me and Georgia, but at the same time, I don't want to feel vulnerable ever again now. So now I've got a complete different mentality. Vulnerability is a strength. It is a strength. People but, will use it and as for a woman, for me personally, there's masculine energy, feminine energy, we talk about all this bullshit. A woman's true source and a woman's true powers when she becomes a mother. So it's always going to affect, especially if she's had a kid before, mm -hmm. because she understands the strength as a mother. Women protect, men are protectors instantly, but women naturally, I believe, are bigger protectors. I always say this, but women are the centre of the universe. The world revolves around women. The 100%. way they can carry a baby, the way they nurture it, the way they love it, is different from a man. Mm -hmm. We're more vulnerable than the female species. We don't know how to handle vulnerability. We've all got masculine energy and feminine energy. Everyone has, men and women need each other. There's too much divide. Everybody moaning, complaining, this and that. Family life is the best life in the world. Best. There's nothing, no watch, no car, no house can ever take away family life. No. The same as yourself, Tommy, but would you battle, do you think, no matter what position you were in life? With what? Materialism, family. Do you think you would always still struggle mentally with it? the stuff that you've been through as a kid to now? No, I feel like I'm over everything, man. You think so? No, I'm completely... I'm completely different to what I was. I swear to you, I, you'd think I'm mad saying it, didn't you? You're it? a mad bastard, though. I, I always no, say I that. No, I am. I am. I'm completely like one minute I'm good, one minute I'm bad, but I understand how my brain works now. So, as I said, I got diagnosed with ADHD in 2022. And I thought ADHD was something where naughty kids just run around, you give them a lollipop, and they fucking smash the class up. Yeah. I weren't really like that. But I had the maddest thing where I couldn't read. And they said it was dyslexia, yeah? And I just could never regulate my emotions. Someone would say something to me five years ago, yeah? And I won't forget what they've said. I couldn't leave it. I'd fucking see them, mate, and like, it, it was on. And I was like, I couldn't work out why I was like it. I was like, let it go, man. Someone would say something really small in a conversation, mug me off, and I'll be thinking about it. I'll see them 10 years later and I won't forget it. So I was like trying to work out why the fuck I was like this. But then I went for a really bad stage in life in 2022, yeah, where it was just all too much for me. I'd, I'd, I'd had it all. I was expected so much from myself. I just had a baby. Uh, everything was mad. And I literally couldn't emotionally take it. So I was like, George was like, you've got ADHD. I've seen something and I'm sure you've got it. So I can see the geezer. And he was like... <laughs> So, do we need to do this basically <laughs> from the start i was just praying thinking tell me i've got something so i can at least try and fix it and it turns out i've got adhd and it turns out i don't just make you that you're very um that like fast paced and shouting and screaming it don't you have come downs on adhd you have addiction you have to be like all in on stuff which in business it helps yeah but it can also tear you down at the same time. And it's the same as going out for a drink. I've always said I can't go out and have one beer. Like, I've never been able to do that. It turns into everything. And I've always thought, fucking hell, man, why can't I just go out and have a party? So when I actually started looking into it, it started answering so many questions I had about myself for so long. And that was the stuff that was taking my peace away. Because I just thought I was a nutter. And I, I am. Yeah. But <laughs> I couldn't control how mad I was. So when I actually went and learned about it, and got help, I was so against like medication um, um, and I ain't gonna mention all the other stuff that was going on around the time, I didn't do any of that. I'm completely like, I eat healthy, I don't even drink fizzy drinks. I've never put any anything in my body unless I, it was at a party. But like, I've not had any, I'm not gonna say what the word is for it, but during the pandemic, I didn't have any of that stuff. 
No, I didn't. I didn't have no no. Um, Corkana. I didn't have any vaccines or nothing like yeah, that. Fuck all that. No, but what I'm saying is, I'm not saying any, I'm not against that. Yeah. But I'm just saying personally, because of my mindset, I was just worried to put anything in my body. I wouldn't even take fucking antibiotics. So when I got told I had ADHD, I was like, well, I ain't gonna take medication because it's just gonna make me like someone who I'm not, and it's gonna fuck me up, yeah. But then I had to weigh it up and thought. Well, I either do this or I lose my family and lose everything because I'm uncontrollable how bad I'm getting. I was getting so much worse as the days get on. I was just, I couldn't even order in a restaurant. I could not order in a restaurant. If it took too long for them to come over to take my order, I was going off my head. I was honestly getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So because I obviously was against putting anything to my body and I always have been, I thought, well, what am I going to do? I need to have a fucking... Go on medication or I just need to fight this battle. I won't make it. I will not make it. I don't, do not think, unless I got help for this ADHD, I would have made it past 40. It something bad would have happened to me. I could not have got out of this because it was getting worse and worse. So I went on medication and I went on a really small dose here. I went on 20 milligram of something called Elvance. It's a stimulant, yeah? And people put their nose up at it and go, ah, da, 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 you only in my position. So you, you, can't, you can't say nothing, right? Is, you, there's no opinion you can have because you weren't inside my head. I'm waking up some morning and I'm fucking got a Barry White song in my head and it's in there since I woke up and it goes at night. I thought that was normal. I couldn't think without having music in my head from when I was a kid. Imagine being in that. Imagine not being knowing that you can't gamble because if you put one pound in a machine, you are going to spend everything. So I started looking into it and seeing it is in my family, yeah? And I thought, well, I need to be the one to change it. I can't, I can't go out like this. I need to work on it. So I went on these tablets and I couldn't read from, from when I was a kid until I was 30. Took the tablets, could read. Could read and write. Could express myself. I could think about other people's emotions before I just act on them. I could, I could, I could do maths. And mate, everything I've been told since I was a kid about how sh all of this madness was just down to me having ADHD. I didn't have depression. I just didn't know how to deal with my emotions in my own head. That was all it is. If you don't take those tablets, where would you end up? No, I'm all right. No, I'm if all right. I didn't take them. If I didn't in the first place. You're talking about losing everything, suicide though. Well, I was, I was breaking up with Georgia. I was moving out of my house because it was better for me not to be there around my kid. So I was newly engaged. I was breaking up with Georgia and I was happily to move out. She was happily for me to go. Um... Would I have been suicidal? I don't think it would have ended that way, but it would have sounded bad have happened, man. I would have jumped out. I would have, I, would have, I would have had road rage and done something stupid or I would have fell out with the wrong person. I, I don't know. I'd always been that guy that everyone loved, but I was slowly becoming someone that was, a lot of people could have hated. And I was always that chirpy guy that everyone liked. I, mean, I couldn't go into situations. I couldn't walk into a room. My whole life become like... 24 hours before, I'd be thinking, all right, don't worry, it'll be over in 24 hours, that little event I've got to go to. It'll be over in 12 hours. Don't worry, I can walk through the door. It'll be over in two hours. Like, it, my whole life was like that. I, was, I couldn't go into places and see people because there was so much going on in my head. Like, I'd be in a club and I'd be, that music was going on, but then I'd be a remix in my head of saying girls and I'd be thinking loads of stuff. And it was just like too much for me, man. So... No, I don't, I don't think suicide's an option for me, I'm going to be honest, because I just don't feel like I fought it at that time. But I did doubt myself of how one, one brain could have that many thoughts in that much days. Do you was, know what I mean? Was that a relief for you when you get diagnosed? Does it have to say, oh, okay, James. it makes sense? James, man, I, I'm not just saying it. I, I've always been like a live or let live character, yeah? So where I come from, everyone's really against tablets and things like that. And you can do your thing so it's, it is what it is I sat there in that meeting and I love my son so much man like this all I've got really is my wife and my kids and my friend yeah and I sat there and I thought oh, please say look at this I've got something wrong with me man I can't live like this no more I'm, I'm, I'm moving out of my house I'm leaving my kid I can't like he's, he's only a baby I need to teach him my morals I can't just go out like this I just want to be there and I thought, but I ain't got ADHD. Fuck that, Georgia. You're just pushing me here because you won't admit that you're wrong and this is your fault. And this is, this is, you done that that time to me. And then I go there and I sit with the guy and the guy was like, whoa. And I remember saying to him, listen, if I wanted to do what you do, I could be better than you. And he went, what? <laughs> if I wanted to do what your job, I could learn to do it and I'd be better than you. He went, why do you want to do that for? And I was like, just so you know. And he went, wow, wow. 
He was like, are you happy? And I was like, no. And he was like, what makes you happy? I was like, building my dreams. He's like, mm, like that. <laughs> Then he asked me a question, he's like that. And he looked up and I went, look, have I got it or not? And when I was in there, I was in there two hours. I got out of that seat 10, 20 times to go to the toilet and no one had stood in the toilet for a minute like that. And I, at the end, I went to him, listen, I'm going to be honest with you, you're fucking doing my head in. You're asking me too many questions. And I was all jittery. Mate, it was like I was, honestly, felt like a crackhead at one point in there. I honestly felt like I was going to get sectioned, man. And, and I'd done something and I put a drug in me and it sent me loop here. I was like, who is this person, man? I'm thinking to myself, one side of my head's thinking, control yourself. The other one's like, I can't, this is enough. So when he turned around, he went to me, listen, you've got bad ADHD. Um, as you get older, it can get worse. He said, things go on in life, which can spark it. For me, it was having that breakdown, I feel, that made it worse. And he went, but don't worry, man, it can be fixed. And I went, ha, and he went, take tablets. I said, fuck off, mate, I ain't taking tablets. All right, cool. Well, you tell me that in a week then. You go and stay in your head for another week. So I left there and I thought, well, I'm glad that I know there's something going on. I spoke to Georgia about it. I looked at my little boy and I said, you know what? For once, yeah, fuck that. I've been unselfish enough in my life. This is for you, yeah? I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure you get the best version of me, yeah? And I'm here, so I'm going to do it. Went back there, spoke to my therapist at the time, and I went, what do you think about these tablets? She went... Well, it depends what you think about it, but for people who I spoke to have said it's like being born again and you can see things clearly. So the prescription come through the door and it actually makes me fucking feel physically sick thinking about it because I was so alone at the time, yeah? I waited for it to be delivered and I waited at the window for the postman all morning. And when I see the van come out, I was like, have you got something for me? And it was like, I was being, it was like, I'm a multi-millionaire, 30 year old man with a kid and a wife and I'm waiting at the post box for a prescription and I'm, this is like, uh, I just, I'm doing anything to, for me to get through this, yeah? And he was like, yeah, I've got something for you and I've got it and I fucking didn't even shut the door, mate. I just run to the, to the pharmacy and I didn't even have money on me. <laughs> and I got there and obviously that, George is ringing my phone and I'm like, you see in the camera, like, I'm doing all madness. This is how mad I'm going. I've, I've never even thought about this. I slammed the door behind me, actually. I didn't leave the door. That's because no one was in, yeah? I'm waiting for this prescription at the door. I'm there all day, and I'm just so thinking, you're going off your head here. But with the ADHD, I'm telling myself I'm going off my head, but at the same time, like, shut up. <laughs> it's fucking mad, yeah? I see the postman, run out the door, slam the door, grabbed it, and I sprinted to the post office, uh, to the pharmacy. Didn't have no money on me, mate. Have you got this prescription for me? I'll come back and sort it out for you. And he went, oh, no, we ain't got it. There's a shortage in the UK for it. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking, fucking hell, is this a sign for me not to take it? But I thought, fuck it, no, I'm not going to do it. I ran to the next one, got it, took the tablet, and it was like, Woof. mine just stopped. That quick, mate. That quick. So all that erratic behaviour, and that's why I had to tell the story like that, was me running to these pharmacies, like my life depended on it. I had this tablet and everything just calmed. And I remember went going back in my kitchen and I started crying. Because I thought, fuck, I've just, that, that's just sent, my, my, my mind's gone. So I ring my brother. I'm like, Ben, I've just took the tablet, yeah? And I'm only thinking about this conversation with you. And he went, huh? So? I was like, I, I think it's sending me brain dead. Come round. I'm, there's no music. There's no other thoughts. I'm just thinking about you. He went, yeah, that's how you're supposed to be. And I went, whoa. You can actually concentrate and just speak to one person and only think about engaging with that person. He was like, yeah. I was like, Wow. Okay then. So that was it. Why did it get so extreme? Obviously, I know you've got ADHD, but was it a build up of pressure of life, or was that always going to come to that case? I think it was always in denial. Gonna, no, it was always going to come here. I couldn't control what I was thinking, man. Unless you're in the edge, you can't understand it. <laughs> it's very, very hard to to understand, man. It's, and it's very hard to explain without sounding like a nutter, but there's lo so many people out here who's going through what I've been through, and if you are going through it, I'm telling you, you're all good. You're not going off your head. Like, there's, there, there's ways and natural things that you can do. Like, I'd sit in the ice bath at three degrees for like 10 minutes. I'm fucking off my head, mate. I'd go out there, my quarry has gone. That sounds like shaking like that. <laughs> and, and as I'm, I'm scared talking, to go as, to the fucking as I'm, doctors, talking, as I'm talking, John, I know like, I'm relating to you because I know what you've been through, yeah? And did I make a lot of mistakes because of this ADHD? The way I can look at it is this, yeah? is everything happens for a reason in life. Everything's fixable. Everything at the time seems so bad, yeah? But when you get over it, it's never as bad as it seems, yeah? Worrying takes away from the peace from tomorrow. It doesn't solve the fucking, uh, the peace from today and it don't solve tomorrow. 
when you've got ADHD, you can't think like that. You just all in. So I made decisions in, in, in business and life where I lost friends. I couldn't hold on to relationships with friends. I really struggled with that. I struggled with people booking in like meals. I could never like keep an appointment. I couldn't do any of that stuff where it made me quite lonely at times because I couldn't go out for dinner with people because the anxiety of having to go into the restaurant used to get to me. And I thought, fuck it, it's just because I've gone on TV and this a big, a big spurt. But it weren't, it was the ADHD. Mate, I'd sit there and smoke 40 fags one after another. Like, really bad addiction I had. Not really bad, but over little things. Like, I'd drink 10 Red Bulls in a day. One day I drank 20 espressos. Like, and, and I know that like, you'd laugh, you know, hey, you nutter. Mate, do you know the come downs that come with that sort of stuff? You're constantly up and down because the dopamine levels in your brain are low. So when you take drugs, it brings them back up and makes you feel normal. Yeah, chemical imbalance. That's why people with ADHD can do more gear than anyone else. Because for them, you just make them feel like a normal human. You ain't making them bolted when they can't have a conversation. They feel level. So fixing that just opened my eyes to the world, man. And fixing that made me see things for what they are and made me forgive so much shit that had happened in the past. Because that was me, it was the only person it was damaging was me. So why am I sitting there worrying about things I can't control? And I learned, and mate, it just changed my life for the better because I understood how I thought. I understand, I understand why I acted that way. I understand why I fell out with that person and took what they said wrong. But I understand why I used to say things and then it used to get to me for days after thinking, why did I say that? And I'd say comments to people and I'd, it would daunt on me for time after. Why did I say that? Shouldn't have said that, you idiot. Like, there was so much stuff that I was dealing with in my head. Did you, I, I needed the help and I took the help. And with getting that help, it made me look at wider what was around me and how much work I was really putting in these businesses for people. And the ADHD was really pushing me to just outwork everyone. But at the same time, wasn't letting me look around me to see that I was getting the piss taken out of me. And... And then I started learning to read and started reading emails and seeing how muggy people actually was towards me. And it started sending me a little bit the other way, man. And I thought, fuck this, man. I've done so much for everyone. And it's time for me to focus on me and my family and for what I think's right. So I ended up, after the baby loss, taking some time out. And it was the first time I took time out. Going back to my business. And it weren't my business no more, man. It had changed. Why? Because, because you think everyone's there, every, you think everyone respects you, yeah? But it's only when you're in leadership, for sake. Because when you're not, they don't give a fuck, they're on to the next thing. So the people you feel like is loyal around you and the people who do anything for you are, when it comes to the next person, they just jump. That's why you can't like, buy a loyalty because you can always be outbidded by someone. Always. So, and I found it hard to deal with. I was like, well, everyone's got my back, it's sweet. I can go and like grieve with my wife, but it weren't the case. People around me started dropping like flies and it showed me. And it was like a mad lesson from God. And I honestly think it was because I used to sit there thinking, just show me who I've got around me and not meant to be in my life. Fuck me, mate. They started going quick, so quick. I remember planning my wedding before all this shit happened, yeah? And there were so many more people on the list than there is now. Do you know what I mean? And there were so many people I didn't invite who actually should have been there because they're Thank the people. No, 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 don't worry, years, man. We're good. We're good, fuck, James. You know that. Fucking four <laughs> years of friendship. <laughs> lost. No, listen. Blaming ADHD. Listen, you've got to understand something, though, yeah? A friendship's amazing when you don't need nothing from each other. Yeah. Because there's nothing on the line. Mm -hmm. But when it's work-related and there's... You can do stuff for people. It ends up going a different way, man. And it ends up changing so fast. So friendships grow when you don't like we've known each other what four years not once have we asked anything of each other never. wanted anything from each other that's why friendships grow as a bond because you know okay he's not out for something he's not out for the connections he's not out for but you could though and I wouldn't think anything about it I wouldn't think anything about it yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, if I needed to if I needed to act fast I wouldn't be I wouldn't never tell anyone no and I would never think anything of it but when you get leashes around jar at least you want is a bit of appreciation at the end of it. And it, when I started becoming really recognised for what I was doing and getting a big name, I started getting mad hatred from people around me and they wanted what I had. And unfortunately, not everyone can have what I've got because I'm talented. I can tell a story. I can connect with the media. 
I'm good at making products. I'm very good at what I do. And I always had that like, bit of imposter syndrome with, have I just catapulted off the back of towel and made this? But now I realise I can think straight. No, I'm very, very good at what I do. So No, you've got to give yourself credit because I will always tell you how amazing you're doing, proud of you, and I wouldn't say that lightly. And I appreciate Because that. what you have achieved is unbelievable from the kid from London to then fucking taking things to new heights, progression, admitting you've got problems because we've all got too much pride. I won't admit I've got faults, problems. I'll yeah. admit it myself, not to anyone else. Nobody yeah. will see me vulnerable. Like yeah. I said, your vulnerability is a strength. I know that. Nobody will see me vulnerable. I'll put posts on social media, but part of that, I think, is manipulation as well. Of Very good at it. Con, man. Of course it is. Of course it is. I bet you're conning yourself at the same time, though, isn't it? Because really, you just want to let people see the real you, and this is the real me. And I wanted to show the real me for years, and this is the real me. I'm spiritual. I'm like, I love my family. I... I've got a bad temper sometimes, but I always try and do right by people. I don't let people take the piss out of me. And then I woke up and said, I've let people take the piss out of me. What the fuck's happened to you? So then things started getting a bit sour and I basically just thought, well, I need to break away from where I am. So I resigned as a director of Mallet. Yeah. I felt at the time I resigned because I'd give it 10 years of me really pushing I wanted different things in my life because it was getting a little bit sour with a few relationships. I wanted to basically give my family the best version of me and I'd lost the baby and all I wanted to do is get the baby back. So I basically wanted to do whatever it takes to make sure Georgia gets what she lost and basically have a baby. So I resigned and off the back of that, I just had a bit of shit to deal with. And for me, I've not made any decisions that I think is wrong and I've done everything the right way for me for once instead of just worrying about everyone else. And when you do that, that's when everyone turns on you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, look, I don't want to be encrypted about around the situation because like, it's just, it's, 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 it's long, but I've been in court dealing with something and I won, thank God. Um, I lost a lot of money in doing so. I lost a lot of time in doing so. So it did basically damage me because it took a lot of time defending myself and saying I didn't have to defend myself on. Um, it was people I was friends or slash family with, which I thought was really tough. And it's very hard when you're sitting there in court with someone that had been in your house in Christmas around your family. And it's even harder when you read the bottom of a letter and it says assets I've got and it's got my house on there that my fucking three-year-old kid lives in. So because of a dispute that I've got with someone, you're willing for me to lose my house that my kid lives in. That's really what's, it, it fucked me up a lot, I'm going to be honest with you. Because <clears throat> when you're doing everything for everyone, it's like everything's all good. But as soon as you stop and try and think about yourself, everyone just wants to put you down. And now I'm there. I'm at the point where I'm constantly defending myself at the minute for stuff that I've not done. Is this a family member or a friend? No, uh, <clears throat> business. Business partner? Mm. What's the what's the whole outcome with Mallet Row? If you can talk about it, that's why I'm here. I need to put the record straight. But as I said, look, yeah, I'm in a place where I don't wish any harm on anyone. Yeah, if I'm in court with you, and even if I'm losing, I swear to, I don't want any harm to happen to you. I don't want you to be in this place. I don't want you to feel anxious. I'd love to resolve things with people. I've been in wars in my life. Like I don't want to go through that. This this is nothing. This is business. I mean, you've been through proper proper ag. Uh, where you've got to look over your shoulder every 10 minutes. You can't walk outside your front door. That's proper ag. This ain't proper ag. This is stupid. You're just paying lawyers to fight for you. So you, you feel strong. You can say what you want. But look, where it stands with me is this, yeah? I basically walked away from Mallet because at the time it was the right thing to do. I didn't sell Mallet. I felt like at the time I needed to fix myself before I carried on. I wanted my wife to get better. I wanted to spend some time with my son and I wanted to reflect on this loss, yeah? And with me doing so, I thought, well, if I can, I'll, I'll resign as a director, let someone come in and take my place, yeah? And let the vision go elsewhere and just let someone give it. Because I was, you, you get the point where you get so obsessed with it, you won't let anything change. So I thought, I don't think that's a good way of like running a business, especially if it's gone 10 years. It might need a new fresh of commercial wise on the company to do so. So I was willing to do that. So I stepped back. And in the meantime, I've got a business with my family, which is obviously Citrine. Um, 
it's a, it was a family thing that we made during the trauma. It was a lot going on in our lives and a, a, a lot of shit was happening. It was a bad time for my family last year. So we was all getting more spiritual. My mum's psychic as well, yeah? Yeah, I love your mum. So then next thing, you know, we're like carrying crystals and like my mum's got around my neck and then she's fucking losing it all the time. And then you feel like everything's like, you just, when you go through bad times, you do anything to just feel a bit better. So three of the spiritual sides come. George is getting a reading every 10 minutes. My mum's off her nuts, vodka and orange in one hand, crystal on the neck. Sage. Um, it's just, you go like that. So we end up, yeah, it, it's like that. So we end up finding like this sort of laughter in this spiritual side that we've always had. And we've always believed in it. My family of like, my mum comes from a Catholic background. She obviously looks at it a bit different from a spiritual aspect. She used to take me to a spiritual church at the age of six to connect with spirit. And I'd never spoke about that part of my life. But when we lost the baby, it sort of come back and I become that person again. So my mindset changed. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. The only thing I can do right now is be positive. Yeah, there's no point me being in this negative situation negative because it ain't going to go away. So I'm going to do what I'm used to doing. They're going to make things feel right. So we ended up like just 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 working on 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 projects together as a family just to get us through it but at the same time i've walked away from mallet still own it everyone thinks i've sold it everyone thinks i'm skin everyone thinks i've got a tax bill that's that's basically stopped me from pursuing other things i've had to sell my cars it's all bollocks i invested to buy a business partner out of mallet in january last year and everything was flying at the time yeah I bought the partner out, so now it's me and another person, and then the business and the economy just goes bad. But the business is still performing very, very, very well. But the economy starts doing shit. So what we was earning before, we're not earning no more, but we're all good, we're earning, we're paying the bills, the business is profitable, it's all good. That's in January, the trauma hits me in April, I have to deal with it, so I step back. And then I'm trying to work out what I want with my life. And at the time, it was to step away from Mallet and just to make myself well again. So I still own that business, but I've got another business. At the same time, I'm getting legal letters telling me to stop what I'm doing basically. And I can't pursue, just pursue it. I have to stop trading as a business, yeah? And for me, I'm saying, why? Why do I have to stop trading as a business? We've got, I've got a brand there that does that and I've got a brand there that does that. Citrine's a brand which is a spiritual sneaker brand which is aimed at people who have been through trauma to make their lives better and so they can manifest greatness and they can make themselves feel better. And personally, every time I put my foot in them, it makes me feel grounded. I feel, I feel different. And it's not a gimmick to sell them. But when you put them on, you understand, yeah? So I'm looking and thinking, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. Like I've got one business there that's smashing it and I've got another family business here which my family are just basically, it's, it's not a big company, it's a family company. Why am I not gonna, why am I not gonna trade? Like, for what? For what have I done wrong? You try to put the blockers on that. Well, it was, it was, a, it was a partner. Does that go against your business with trying to trade with something else? What do you mean? Like having, selling another product? Couldn't you do that? I, well, I was, there was things where got brought up from years ago, which basically it was a load of shit, man. It was a clash of egos. It was a clash of egos. And there was a, they, they tried to like stop me from basically pursuing what I wanted to do, yeah? And I'm a creative. So my passion is for making things come alive in front of me. It works, it makes me feel good about myself, yeah? It's what I do. I like creating things. So I'm like, well, look, I've stepped away from Mallet. I'm not gonna sit there and be depressed every single day because I'm fucking just sitting here. I need to be active. I'm just doing things that makes me feel good. So I obviously don't, I don't, I don't sign, I don't, I don't sign it. And I said, no, fuck no, I'm launching. I'm not letting no one stop me from doing anything I want to do in my life. I've made everyone a fortune. I've been a driving force for fucking years. I've made everyone, I put everyone where they are. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I put them everywhere where they was. It was me. I was the man behind it. I am mallet. I always will be mallet. No one can stop that, yeah? And I'm at the point where I'm trying to defend myself with something I've built. No way, how can I do that? I can't let that happen. I fucking can't let no one tell me what to do. I'm gonna look at my son in the face and say to him, yeah, daddy just basically, I'll give in. No, fuck that, that's not who I am. I'm a machine. 
You know I'm a machine. Oh, yeah, brother. Because I'm sitting here now and I'm just, I'm, and the start of this is for me to tell people I've changed my life around. It's because I'm quite passionate to make sure anyone who feels down, there is hope. And there's more than going out and, and, and abusing your body. You can fix yourself. And that's why I'm calm at the start here, yeah? And you're probably thinking, what's happened to him? I'm still the same fucker that you knew four years ago, yeah? And I'm still the man who can make things happen. For me to receive a letter close to Christmas to tell me I'm not allowed to do something makes me worse. Because I'm not wishing no harm. I want everyone to win in life. Why can't I just carry on doing what I want to do? So it was the case of where I ever said, I'll sign that and say I won't do it. Or I'll go and uh, I'm going to carry on because I feel like I'm in the right. And I thought that it would have been sorted by a discussion, but the ego won't let it. So we've had to go to court and I won. Because I ain't stopping for nobody. Especially if I'm not right. If I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to say I'm wrong. I'll be the first one to say that I'm wrong. And I've always done that. I've always been the one that's gone, I've dealt with that wrong. I'm sorry. I could have done that a separate way. I've always done that. And that's my, I've always thought it was my best trait. Because I sometimes I give people a bit too much slack. I thought, you know what? They're a bit weaker than me. So I'll just tell them it was my fault so I can just get on with it. I can't bother people having this face like a slapped ass. So next thing you know, I've left out this worst year in my life in 2000, last year, which was because it was the first bit of pain I'd have lost, yeah? Coming to the start of this year with intentions of just, just having a family business and just getting my my mum's my mum's obviously up and down. She lost my granddad in January. The last thing he told me is don't fucking give in to no one. Yeah. So there's a lot against me now, yeah? And I'm thinking, well, this is for my family, man. This isn't just something where I'm going to work, people. Me and my family want to do this. So I'm not gonna stop doing it. How can I? So I fought it. And I've been in court for and dealing with a, a legal battle for months, like months and months and months. But could have been sorted from a conversation. It could have just been sorted by a conversation. Do you feel as if you can enjoy life now better? I was enjoying life when it was happening anyway. Well, yeah. You can't keep me down, mate. What's what the battle fucking... with the kind of getting the cars, selling the cars, getting the cars, selling the cars? Would it, is that ADHD or what the, do you think the that original, is? The original one, yeah. I, I'm going to be honest, y'all. The original one when I said it, as I was, uh, I said it on a podcast and I was really struggling. That was the time when I struggled with my ADHD. And I can't watch it back, mate. I was off my edge. <laughs> Off my edge, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I come home one day, I had two G-Wagons on the driveway and uh, some mental uh, Land Rover Defender and an SLS, yeah. I had like 1.3 million quid's worth of cars, yeah. I weren't driving none of them. I was driving the G-Wagon to work every day and I just felt like it was making me a target. So when I said I'd get out of the car and people were doing shit for themselves and I'm just jumping out in a G-Wagon and putting petrol in a car and acting like fucking no one can touch me, and I don't want people to feel shit of themselves because I don't want to make myself a target. But obviously people take what they take out of things I say. So that one there was, people told me I couldn't buy them cards because they was hard to get. So I made it like I was collecting fucking football cards, mate. I bought up all these cars. I was going through loads of shit and it weren't making me happy. So I sold everything because I wanted to just start from scratch. But then like my little boy likes Ferraris. So I bought a Ferrari. But then everyone's saying, fucking hell, you said you weren't going to do that. I was like, fucking hell, yeah. I do a lot to say that I'm going to not do things again. <laughs> Every time I go out and have a turn out, I tell my missus I'm yeah. not going to do it again. I do it the weekend after. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. So I feel like I was judged a lot about that. Um, Tommy Malik's bought another, a Ferrari. But the same editor who put that in the paper was the same one to go back and say, I've sold a 200 grand Ferrari to make me look skint. She was saying it was 500 grand three months ago. The car thing, is it ADHD? Yeah, completely. It is actually, it is, because you you have to be obsessed with something all the time. So one minute you're obsessed with fitness and health, then ice baths, then you're obsessed with looking at cars online and you've got to then get it. And then when you get it, you don't want it. It's mental. It's a fucking mental thing to have. So yeah, the car is on that. But <clears throat> it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with it, innit? Like, I'm just, when are you at your happiest, Tommy? Nah, I'm very happy now. That's because you're sitting across from yeah, me. Yeah, I am. I'm glad to see you, but I feel phenomenal now. I feel phenomenal because the, the place I'm in right now is I worried so much about ever being here. But I've been here now and it's not that bad. So I feel amazing. I feel good. Yeah, you look happy. The I ca feel ca happy. Calmness is a strength. Because obviously four years ago, it's fucking ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But you, no matter what, where you were, you still set out and achieved what you said you would do as well. Yep, so whether you're calm or that, that method of thinking does destroy you. Every billionaire I've interviewed, none of them are happy. Yeah. And I've, I've identified with that. I'm chasing a dream of money, money, money. Mm -hmm. Got the farmhouse, got the cars, got everything that I need. But yeah, I'm still not happy. 
Mm-hmm. So what I had to do was take myself out and realise, wait a minute, happiness is a mindset. Yep. I know people with a camper van who camp outside, camp in the van, travel around fucking Europe, and they're so happy with yep. just living on the edge of nothing. Exactly. But yet, all these people chasing this illusion of limitless fucking mindset of I want to be the number one, I want to be the biggest and the best. People need to stop buying into the bullshit. But it takes money to, for you to say yeah, that. Yeah, I wish everybody, I talk, Jim Carrey says that, I wish everybody could cheat taste fortune and fame i've not got mega fame or mega money but i've got enough that i should be happier but he says i wish people could enjoy f- see fortune and fame for what it is taste that so they know it's not the 100%. answer you don't know what you want in it like yeah. until you experience it you don't know what you want look like, them years for my life of being a lunatic and chasing this dough is the best fucking thing i've ever done because at night it was dark times and i was mad i didn't know what i was thinking from time to time i still set out and done exactly what i said i was gonna do but now I understand it completely different and I know how to build things to last. You can't be erratic and not make big mistakes because it just don't work like that. So now I understand planning. I didn't understand planning before. If you told me about planning, I'll tell you to fuck off. I'll say it's going to slow me down. But now I understand, yeah, that, all right, I'm going to go for a few years of hardship now. And I'm not talking about not going to be able to eat. I'm still going to have a lovely house. I've still got my kids still going to be well looked after. But boo-hoo, I've had to sell a fucking Ferrari. Who gives a shit? Do you know what I mean? Who cares? I'm so happy because I've done what I said I was going to do. I was in a place where I was earning so much money, I could have just been happy sitting there. But like, let me rephrase that because that's the point there. I was earning so much money, could have been happy with the money but I weren't happy inside of what was going on. But now I've stepped away from something and I am fucking so happy, man. I know you're going to think I'm a nutter. I'm, I am, you're right. But I'm an happy nutter <laughs> because I'm, I've, I'll go home every day and I don't feel like I've done anything stupid where before was just so intense. So now I want to build things slow and I want to enjoy the ride where before it was just so fast. And I understand I've made so many mistakes in my life. I'm not going to make them twice. And as I said, the the worry that you have and the constant driving yourself mad of doing it fast is the thing that ruins it. Do you think social media plays a big part in people's mindset? Yeah, of course it does because everyone wants to be like what they're seeing everyone living in Dubai right now. It's just like laughable. Yeah. <laughs> it's jokes, man. Like when when I go to Spain, yeah, and I spend the summer there, there's more multi, 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 multi millionaires surrounded you than you've ever seen yeah none of them lot give a shit about how they dress about their watches like they just don't give a shit so when you see everyone in Dubai yeah and doing all this madness and everyone's destined to do that you think wow but we've, we've, wow. we've, we've bought into the lifestyle we've bought into everybody's living a better life than us for yeah. me it's to come away from social media for me it's to come off grid within the next five years and just enjoy life i don't need to put myself out there and live life to the full potential because i believe like i says earlier happiness is a mindset and i believe on social media it doesn't take you to a good place especially with reels and the attention span coming down and, mm-hmm. and looking at everybody else having a great life everybody's scared see what you're going through what you went through every man who i speak to feels that way because of the pressure of life of man nobody understands understands man especially our own fucking species we don't understand fully what the fuck is going on in life i always say it, but there's no blueprint or manual how we actually right. live it and the pressure that's on us we don't speak we get angry we get agitated we get fucking high on life i'll make more money i'll get this car it'll, it'll take away the pain the pain's always there every day i wake up in pain yeah and i think i need to keep striving because my family needs me my mum my kids my sister they all need me so there's pressure nobody says are you okay they might say it and you go yeah i'm fine fuck off yeah, of course but really if we actually sat down and go well wait a minute i'm actually in pain they go okay how can we help but you say you don't need you to know help. what you need to to take from that yeah and it's what i've learned and i honestly feel like if i've got anything there's wisdom out of this man because you feel like yeah i've got to be there i've got to do this i've got to do this for my family yeah your family would rather you be at home and be happy than coming home late and yeah, they've got a nicest house, but you're coming home and you can't even talk to them because you've had a shit that work. But I remember George saying, fuck it, we'll lose it all. We lived in a flat before. You drove a smart car, we was happy, let's do it. I don't care. I don't need this. And for me, uh, that's when I thought, oh shit, let me look at this angle from a different share. Yeah? Why was I so driven when I spoke to you four years ago? Because I had my first taste of money and I was petrified of losing it. I woke up every day scared of losing it. Why am I so happy now, yeah? It's because I've lost it. 
I've got it back. I've lost it again. It don't matter, man. I know the feeling. The feeling's not as bad as you think. It's not as bad as losing that baby in, in April. So it's nothing to me. I don't feel anything towards this shit that I'm going through. I sat there in that courtroom and I sat there and I looked at myself and I thought, I'm quite proud of myself, actually. I took this really well. Whatever way this goes, I've given my best and I've sat here and it, it, I could have been here and, and something worse is happening. So I'm really at that stage now where I feel like there's so much more to life than constantly battling for what the next thing is because you'll never find it. You, you, whatever you get, you want the next thing. Like as soon as I got um, a decent house, I wanted one in Spain. As soon as I got that, I wanted a Ferrari. As soon as I got a Ferrari, I wanted a plane. As soon as I fucking think about the plane, I want an island. Like, mate, where does it end up? No wonder you end up getting all these mad things going on because you can't fulfill yourself like that. So this is why I started Citrine, yeah? It's because researching this development of the brain and, and how you can do things so much different peacefully is the way forward. Doing it erratically doesn't work. You might earn money quick, but you try and hold on to it because you fucking make mistakes. So for me, going into this spiritual side and this more calmer mindset is it's going to take me longer to do things. But I'm telling you now, and I, and I promise you, yeah, I will go as far as I want to go. Like I couldn't, I couldn't, it's, I'm limitless, man. I'm completely limitless. But I now know that I will stop one day. I won't go to the part where I'm just chasing my way into a coffin. It's not going to happen. Because I understand life better, man. And it takes trauma and it takes losses. And it's so much easier for me to say it because I've been through it than someone's just trying to get it. Because if I had myself talking four years ago, I'd have said, shut the fuck up. You, you, you can say that because you've had millions and you understand how it is and you've got assets. Yes, you're all completely right. But I've also had to go through the madness to get there and it ain't nice. So my tackle on life now is do things the right way. Do it quieter. Probably don't be as intense. Like I've made my mistakes and now I'm comfortably going to go out and start again. See, I used to think people who worked a 95, I used to think mugs. Now I look at them with envy. Maybe they've cracked the code. They're just there, get their paycheck. They know when they're going home. They know what holidays they can take. Dana White says it when you're an entrepreneur, you're working Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, yeah, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. You're doing fucking 18 hour shifts. Yeah. It's constant pressure. Constant. Constant pressure. Like I say, I used to fall into the trap of fuck the system, this and that, but... You can be happier anywhere. And like we keep saying, happiness is a mindset. It's how you see the world, how you can appreciate. Some people can be sweeping floors and fucking loving life, I'm but they're happier than us driving about Ferraris, you. Range Rovers. It's fucking crazy. It's mad, but, but look, I don't know if that's our mindset as a whole. I don't know if we were lost souls before, during, and after. No, man, it's, it, listen, everyone's destined for different things in life, yeah? I'm destined to be where I am today. I'm meant to be sitting in this seat, yeah? I'm meant to have gone through what I've gone through. I'm good at telling the story. I'm good to to I'm good to act on things, yeah. And I was I did have happy moments when I had um, the Ferrari. I, I did have happy moments, but it was short lived. How long does the happiness last? I'm gonna be honest with you now, yeah. Because I don't think I'm sitting here and saying that these things don't matter because they do. They do drive you for better things. They do make you want nice stuff. Material stuff does make you want to go out and get it. Because if that didn't exist, you would just fucking wouldn't care. So you do want to have the nice holidays and you do want to go out and smash it. But you need to go and, and this is what I've learned, yeah, is you need to do it for the right reasons because that happiness lasts minutes. I'm not even joking. Because say, for example, that car's cost you half a million quid, yeah? You leave that car in the garage and then work out how much that's costing you a day. And every day you don't drive it, it'll make you feel sick. So for me, I, what I learned from all these things was, is this, yeah? Is I'm driving a car right now and it's a 12 plate and I love it more than anything. I clean it on a Sunday myself, every Sunday now. I polish it. I'm in love with this car. It means so much to me, yeah? Because I learned to appreciate things around me. And the other thing I've really learned, and this is the most important, is... I went out there for one reason, yeah, when I first started. Whenever I've said on podcasts, I had this reasoning which was different, it wasn't. All I wanted was to be rich, man. I know I might have said different things. If I look back at that person, I just wanted the money. I'd never had money. I'd heard my mum and dad arguing about money my whole life. I'd seen people with stuff. And society told me that like, that was the life. So I thought if I got it, I'd be happy, yeah? And that's how I set out. And I set out to go and be rich. But now I've had it, there's one thing that I want. I want to leave, make a difference, man. 
I want to make a difference. The money comes with that. But I want purpose. I want to change people's lives. I want to give something to people. I don't just want to build another shoe brand. I want to build a community. I want to show people uh, how to manifest things right. And the way people have been taught to manifest is wrong. You think that you can just think about something before you go to bed. And go, oh, this, this, this time next year I'm going to go out and get a private jet. Don't be so fucking re like ridiculous. It's not how it works. Manifesting to me, yeah, and this is what I'll, what I'll teach along the way is this, yeah. Having that goal and putting it down on paper, yeah, makes you remember constantly what you want, yeah? You've got to hold yourself accountable and go out and work. But then whilst you're going for that, you're going to be fucking going, woof, woof, woof. It ain't just straightforward. Manifesting is keeping hope and keeping self-belief inside you to go out and not stop. That's for me what manifesting is. It ain't you just go and ask the universe for something and they give you it. It don't work like that. And that's another thing where it's making people lazy. Looking on social media and people are like, oh, I'm manifesting this dream house in LA with that car, da, da, da. I'm like, right, what's your plan to get there? Because physically, how do you do it? And that's what I feel like, the, what I want to spread out to people. is don't live that false life of you're just going to ask for it and then wait for it to come to you. It's not going to happen like that. There's certain things you have to do to go out and get it. And that's really what I'm about now. I'm how, bad, how bad was the booze in the gear? For me? Yeah. No, not bad, man. Because I've seen the last few posts the last few weeks. I didn't realise the extent of the party and you stayed out. Obviously, you know my backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it wasn't like that. I was the best was at that everyone. Was that an escape? No, no. Do you know what? Going on reality TV showed me a different world, man. Yeah. And like, I was smoking, I was drinking, I was doing whatever. And really, I'd probably go out four or five times a year. But then when I go out, dangerous. Like people I was with would love it for the first day and then go, mate, this fucker is a lunatic. Cause I just wouldn't stop. So I did never had a drink problem and I've never had a drug problem at all. But I've always like coming from reality TV, it was so much more than going out and having a turnout. You're constantly scared what's gonna come out on you. Constantly. You're constantly petrified that someone's took a picture of you at a party and there's gear on the table or, or you're in the wrong place. You're constantly scared of that. So for me, that's why I stopped drinking. I stopped drinking, I've done, I think I've done three and a half years, man. Because I thought, right, I'm doing well for myself. I don't want to put myself in position where some fuckers like that have a phone. And now I don't give a shit. I'm not a reality star, I'm a businessman. Do what you want, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's a good feeling when, give you, a when shit, you work mate. for yourself you and you've got down. that fuck you money. You can't put me down. Yeah. How the fuck are you going to put me down? What are you Every do? reality star I know, though, their, their heads are gone. There's not really anybody saying. Because they're all because scared. They're, they're living in a life that's not reality. Exactly. They're living in two separate lives and they can't separate what's real and what's fake. Yeah. It's fucking mad. Every reality star, every kind of actor, they're not really here. Not at all. I don't know if that's the creative mindset as well because there's constant pressure to create views. I understand that as well, but they seem to struggle most than anyone I've interviewed. Because you become scared, man, because you just think like, like, for example, my first podcast, I was still sort of in reality, so I was scared to talk about certain things. And listen, my story is my story. I say what I want. My story, do you give a fuck whether journalists are going to write about it? So what? Uh, it, it is what it is. I've done loads of stuff. Look, look, I don't regret anything. I don't regret anything. But I was so scared for so many years. I feel like it caused me a lot of mental issues, man, because I was scared to be in, in, in the wrong situation because I just felt like I was a target. Mate, I was on Tower. Who the fuck was I? I was just a reality star. Like, get over yourself. But that still made me worried. I was always worried that something was going to happen. When now, nah, I'm so much at peace with it. And as I said, I've had the loss that changed my life. So everything else doesn't matter. Who gives a fuck, man? I don't care. I'm so happy to just carry on. I do not give a fuck, man. So I do feel now, nah, the reason I'm happy is because I've had so much acceptance, yeah? And I've been through this shit. I hadn't been through anything when I told my first story. I thought I had. It was, it was, I was a kid then. I've been through real life now and I appreciate the real things. And at the, the time I am in my life right now, what do I want? I want to be able to go home. I want to be able to put my kid to bed. I want to be able to make sure I've done the right thing. I want to be able to switch off every now and then. And I've learned how to do that. I can go home and I leave my computer at work. Before I was working 19 to 20 hours every day, every single day. Like it, it was not negotiable. I couldn't go on holiday. I'd just be like a nutter. But now I can actually leave my computer at home, sit there with my little boy, like do a crazy dance to someone on TV and act like a fucking idiot and then go to bed at nine o'clock, wake up at four, go gym and work. Like now I've found my happiness and that's who I am. So obviously all the stuff like 
the businesses and things like that from before and the people I was working with, they don't match the energy I'm on now. I'm a different person. I find it really hard to communicate with them. So that's why my life's changed so, 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 so much. Because I've done the America. You know, like all that excitement of cracking the states. Mate, I've done it. Mm -hmm. Was it good? Yeah, it was all right. I didn't take any of it in, really. I really didn't. I didn't that's a sad reality. I didn't, mate, I'm going to be pleasant. honest. I didn't enjoy it, man. Like, I, the, the thing for me is when I was going to America, I was scared that I was going to have a drink and then someone was going to like call a party on and I'd stay up. That was what I was scared of. Like, I'd miss meetings and stuff. And I was just constantly worried, man. Like, I weren't happy myself. When now I feel like I've been given a second chance and I've been given all this trauma and problems for a reason. And I'm not going to let them pass me, man. I'm not going to go down the same trap as I did before where I'm going to let what I see on social media affect the way that like, I live my life. I'm not going to let it happen. If I want to act a fucking idiot in front of people and dance in the street with my little boy, I'll do so. I don't care what you think of me, man. How it's, much of being a father has changed your life? It's changed my life, man. Mate, my son's perfect. I can't, I get upset talking about him because he's that perfect. And shit could have been so different for me. So different, man. I, I could have lost a lot, man. It don't matter what I've lost financially, having arguments here and there. I could have lost my family. And for me, that's the most important thing. And to know that like, I can teach him my morals and the stuff that like, I've been through and teach him that makes me so proud. Like you probably notice I, when I'm with you, I probably, I, I've, I get a bit back to where I was and I start talking fast and stuff like that. But I pronounce my words a bit more better now. Where before, I was just like, yeah, mate, fucking da 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 da. <laughs> but now, when I'm with my son, it's made me a better person because I want to teach him how to communicate with people, things that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Having a son changed everything for me. And it made me realize there was so much more to life than what I was doing. And the life that I set out to go and get and thought that was what I was needed for me to thingy, it wasn't what I needed, man. And this took a lot of trauma to get through it. But, mate, as I said, there's so much light at the end of the tunnel for everyone, man so much light and when you're going through this shit you don't you can't see it but trust me when you get there man it's like it's it's it's, it's a beautiful thing where do you think you would have ended up if you didn't have your family <sighs> mate i don't know man like it got really bad a few years ago for me it really did i was like i was fucking i was off my head man i was like it's really hard to separate from being a boss and being a family man because you end up talking to your missus like she works for you at the same time. Do you know what I mean though? Yeah. It's fucking disgusting, man. It's disgusting. Uh, you think everyone's like, you end up getting this feeling where because you've got to be a leader, yeah. you feel like you've got to do it with everyone. You ain't. You, you can let it, like, let it go, man. And my missus taught me a lot. She stood by me for a lot. She taught me a lot. My dad's been there massively for me. My mum and dad have been there for me massively. And there were so many times where they should have walked away because I'd said things that I should never have said to them, man. Like, don't tell me how to fucking be a parent and like you've done the best job ever. You know, things that I should never have said to them. And they still stood by me for it. So now I just want to be a good family, man. I've still got the maddest ambition to build these unbelievable companies. But ambition and drive and, and purpose is what makes you in life you know 100 you see all the boxers and that retiring they always come back for more because there's something missing so you've got to have purpose i always thought okay just fuck off james going I, i'm a contradiction pure walking contradiction i am, I am. i'll see you buy a house in the woods and yeah. then i'm down in london then i'm traveling yeah, to New York, yeah, yeah. And then i'm traveling to miami which yeah. i want to be the biggest and the best yeah, yeah, i'll get yeah, yeah. that guest that will elevate me with the contacts that they've got because i do my thing but it's a constant fucking contradiction i mm. think you're off your fucking head i'm glad you said that because that that is me, man, like, and and I know it, and and I do think a lot of the time, like I'm I'm mad, like, and I know we laugh about it because we're a bit fucking tapped, yeah, but I do think, fuck, man, am I gonna end up like like Carne or something? Bro, I'm climbing mountains and in cold that's seas what I'm and cunts are thinking, oh, that's great, but they don't know why I need to do it. Exactly, I need to do it because I'll fucking kill some cunt. <laughs> Genuinely, bro. Like people don't know the guy. He's a good guy, but I'm thinking I'll kill you. You can't. I could be talking to anybody and think I could bury you, you know somewhere. What? Yeah, you know what? You know what? And, and now it's just this is full me. Yeah, this is Tommy. This isn't reality. We've got to speak a certain way because of that. Yeah. I'd have rows with people, and the things that'd be going through my head, I'd think, "Whoa, just don't think that. Get the fuck out of this situation." And it took a lot for me to be able to like sort of calm me down. 
The thoughts are okay. I'll go out running and I'll think I could bury that cunt over there. <laughs> Genuinely. And I've not I have not spoke to him in five years. <laughs> I'll think I could bury somebody James, there. Listen, I'll, I'll leave the mad. tablet there. You don't go take it or not. It's not true if you take it or not. You, you can do what you want to do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you, but if you listen to this back, mate, you don't need a fucking therapist to say you yeah. But listen, uh, the, the way I look at it is this, James, yeah? Why the fuck are we so hard on ourselves, man? Why? Just live. Like, we might have a shit year last year. It might be a good year this year. But then really, when it's all said and done, who cares? Mm. Just living in it. So that's why I'm so different. And I know you're looking at me thinking, this fucker took a tablet and he's gone and like, <laughs> it. it ain't. I just don't want to be that person ever again where I've got, like, the, the, the intentions are not right for why I'm doing it. And it's all for the wrong thing. And I've got so much better stuff around me. Friendships. Like purpose there's so much more to it man all that chasing is bollocks mate how was therapy for you no i don't feel like it worked you know because at the time i'd that undiagnosed adhd and i hadn't seen it see I've, I've been a few times and i think i don't trust that cunt like i'll speak and i think i'm better than you anyway i could help you some of them look fucking terrible and i think how can you give me how can, there, don't, don't have to take it <laughs> i think how can you give me advice on your little like, shit you know what I think we've, we've. I judge a person in energy, and whether energy is real or not is a different ball game. I ended up out of prison. Did you say what did you say? Ever what? Ed, um, whether energy. Energy, whether it's real or not? Yeah, a lot of people deny it. They Frequency deny it. These energies, yeah. People think it's hocus pocus. I don't know Reiki course. Yeah, do you know, yeah, yeah. Do you know why they think it's hocus pocus? Yeah, though, yeah? Not, because they've been tuned. taught by the system and yeah. don't want them to better themselves. Fucking hell, anyone that, that mate. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody should be telepathic as well. You know how that way when the phone goes, you know it's somebody, you know who it's going to be. Everybody's telepathic. We just don't tune into the brain enough with it's the pineal a, gland and all that spiritual <laughs> shit. But there's, there's levels to it. There's levels there to is. understanding. And we're like, bat, we're like chargers. And when you're feeling drained, you've got to ground yourself, sun gaze, eat right, fruit and veg. I struggle with that. I know the answers. But sometimes I battle because my interviews are very intense. So I'll go and eat my emotion. I'll not speak about it. How was your interview? Go, I smashed it. But then I've still got to process what everybody says, everybody tells me, and then it's that reflection of me, yep. and it, you're questioning everything. So it becomes draining, but you can recharge yourself. That's why dogs are so important, because dogs are out in nature, and then they come into the house with good energy. That's why we're so attracted to dogs. So, just so you know, yeah, the other reason behind citrine is it's got a crystal in the bottom of the shoe, yeah, yeah, yeah. which brings wealth and prosperity, but there's nothing in between the rubber and the crystal in your foot. So when developing it, you know, for example, when you get electrocuted, they say, well, if you've got trainers on, rubber trainers, it's not going to go through you. It's the same as letting the energy through the earth into your body. So by us wearing rubber trainers all the time, it's stopping the natural flow coming for us. That's why, you know when people used to hug trees and take their shoes off and you used to be like, fucking lunatics, look at them hippies. It's grounding, it's a real yeah. thing. And it makes you feel better. And when I was in Mallorca uh, over the summer, I grew my hair out. Everyone thought I was a nutter. I'd go and just float in the sea, man. And I'd go and like just eat fish. And like, it was mad. But <laughs> yeah. mate, I felt phenomenal, man. Yeah. But society makes you feel like a nutter when you do that. Yeah. But I was happy. But they said the Native Americans, they used to grow their hair because their hair was connected to the central nervous system. Really? It used yeah. to heighten their, their feelings of really? fear. Yeah. Uh, but then you've got Buddhists who shave their hair. Yeah. So who's right, who's wrong? I just didn't so want to trust the barber yeah, in Spain, innit? <laughs> <laughs> but with so many religions, so many. Listen, Listen, if you're religious and you're doing good in life, by all means do it. But for me, religion is no different from ha having an imaginary friend. There's no difference. Who is it? Who are you praying to? There is a higher power out there. For me, I don't know what it is. I'm open-minded to all religions. I've got Muslim brothers and sisters who I love Christianity. People who do homeless work turn to Christ and are doing amazing good on them. But for me, I just like to question it all. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it's all hocus pocus. Of course, Dr. Amoto used to take photos of the crystal and speak to the crystals and they used to change the colours and change the frequency and the vibration just by words alone. So the spirituality as a thing, I think it's becoming too westernised now. I think people are then gravitating towards it because it's trendy. Yeah, Same as wars, Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, Israel. People just support what they see in the media. So it's to stay open-minded to everything. Understand life's not, you don't have all the answers to life. To put it this way, yeah. If... If if you know you're gonna have a shit day, yeah, and you just got a, a, a saying you don't want to do, what's gonna be better? Wake up in the morning, and go, do you know what? I'm <laughs> fucking hell. I don't want to do this today, but whatever. Just get on with it. We're like we're lucky to be. It could be worse. There's so much worse positions to be in life. 
Um, we'll get through today and then tomorrow we're going to have a blinder and whatever. We'll just make a laugh of it. Fuck it. Let's just get through today. Your day will go faster than waking up going, oh my God, I've got to go there today. This is going to be shit. This is going to be shit. You're walking there. It's going to be a terrible day. Your day's only going to get worse. But if you're just sitting there and you think, fuck it, I'll just, whatever. It is what it is. I'm here. There's nothing stopping you from being positive. Yeah. It's the same thing with all the spiritual stuff. You just, you just have a different outlook on life instead of what we've been taught by our parents, which I personally feel like was negative. So that's what it's all about. And coming back to therapy, I'd sit there in therapy, yeah? And I'd be thinking of some mad shit when she was talking to me. To the end, I was just like, yeah, yeah, and I, uh, yeah, I'm good. But mate, my head was somewhere else. I was in Mexico. <laughs> so I was mad. So it did work for me, but it really works for other people. So for me, it's just been a really long journey of soul searching, yeah? And listen, we might do part three and I'll go, fucking, I don't know what I was saying at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but as it stands right now, I've got a very small amount of people around me and I swear to you, James, I feel phenomenal. I feel phenomenal. I feel more ambitious than I ever felt. I know that this is going to happen. I know I'm going to go to heights that you've never seen. But this is the time now. Before it wasn't. This is the time. Because I understand it now. I know where I need to go. I know what I need to do. There's, it's not as much pressure. I've got everything I need. This is a bonus. You've got to separate them. Everything I need is at home. Yeah, and health. Everything else is a bonus. And this is the mentality I've got now. So before, it was, you have to separate them. So now I've separated them, I honestly feel like I can go to heights that I, 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 you could never imagine. I honestly do feel that. Because I feel like everyone's destined to do more with them life, yeah? Everyone's searching for something. I know a lot of people hide it. And all I'm doing is spreading positivity now. So I'm happy for people to go, fucking hell, look at him. He's a nippy. He's gone off his nut. He's an urban hippie. What's he doing? That's no problem. But I feel happy doing that. Whereas before, everyone was going, hey, smashing it. Wicked entrepreneur. Proper. Want to be like him. Trust me, you didn't want to be that guy. That was all a lie. You don't want to be that person. That person was not happy. That person was angry at the world. And that person just wanted money. You don't want to be who I was four years ago. You might like the story of where I come from and how I turned it around, which... I'm proud of myself for getting there, but I was unhappy and I was probably better off with less. So the, the, the moral of the story is this, yeah? Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for because you think you want that, but when you know what you've got to give to get there, just be careful what you wish for. But life changes as well. The person we were today, we weren't yesterday. Everything so, changes. Like the shit we were talking four years ago, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going yeah. to do that. We've done it. Yep, we fucking done it. I was, we were in America last year. 100%. Unbelievable. 100%. We just sold out fucking Glasgow, fifteen hundred seater. A but guy you, from doing a podcast. Knew you was going to do it. Who was in a crack den six but, years but ago. You knew, you knew you was going to do yeah. it. That's what I'm saying. But it doesn't mean fuck all. It don't. That's the fucking it sad don't. reality. It don't. You but think it's going to fill all the pieces? You're going to feel that sort of accomplishment. I'll get small bursts of happiness for like three, four seconds, and then the negatives will kick in. See, this is the problem, and this is you talking to me. Yeah, so let's not make it about you. That's where I was. That's where I was, and it's a fucking horrible place. And you've you upset me just saying that. I'm going to be honest, with you. because that that's just brought it back to me, man. I don't want that ever again. What you've just said was where I, where I was. It was like a burst of happiness for like five minutes, and I'm back down. I'm like, and then I'm like an espresso to try and bring me back up, and I'm like, I don't want that feeling. It's made me feel uncomfortable. You saying it because that's where I was, and I'm not there now. And when yeah. you come out the other end of it, man, I'm telling you, James, it's just... The, all I'm saying is to anyone, there's hope, man. You just don't know where you're going, a lot of people. And you're hoping for the wrong things. But when you actually sit there and go, do you know what, fuck this, I actually do want just happiness. And you make a change, then you, you feel it. And this, don't let the society stop you from what you deserve. You deserve happiness. Everyone deserves happiness. What do you think life is? <clears throat> Without getting too spiritual and deep on it, um, I feel like everyone's here for a reason. And I think that's why everyone's got different talents. And I've always said, I told you things that I'd never have told anyone else. I said it on the way here, someone I was with, yeah? So your one is obviously, you've got this gift that can make people open up to tell their story, to inspire. That's what I think, yeah? Mine's for me to go through the shit show everyone that it's possible to do what I've done from where I come from and tell the story. And I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that my life's written and we're supposed to be where we are today. 
that's what I think life is. And I feel like there's such a higher purpose to where we really are. I feel like you shouldn't take it too serious. I think it's about enjoying where we are today, isn't it? And I think the society is the thing that's fucked. It's because we expect so much from each other. And really, man, I just want, I just want good people around me. And I understand life now. And life's this for me. When I was driving Georgia to the hospital when she was losing the baby, I looked at her and I just thought, there's nothing we can do about this. We can't control this. That's real life. It's out of your control, man. It's completely out of your control. So why are you trying to control everything all the time? Control freaks. That's what life to me is, is doing the best I can do with what I've been given. Waking up every day and just giving my best. And if I don't give my best, and, and, and if I don't achieve what I should that day, I'll give it another crack tomorrow. But I'm not gonna walk around my head down, constant worrying about this and that. Life's to be enjoyed. And I've had the experience now to show that it's not all about what we think it's about. There's so much more to it. The relationships, the timings, the energies that we share with each other, the even the turnouts we've had to, together, them parties, they mean things, man. They mean things. Them watching the sunrise and our beef and as much as you're going to go, oh, because you're trying to think about not getting out of your nut, you think about it, man. When we was young and we're sitting there on the beach watching the sun come up and we've got not a care in the world and we're just fucking partying. That's what life's about, man. Not sitting in the office to try and afford to buy things that you think is going to make you feel better because it's never that. It's just going through things as happy as you can be, man. I was speaking to a girl yesterday after a Kibruk. Amazing girl, man. She was addict as well alcohol changed their life but we were talking about the party days i was happier then because it took me away from the pain it took me away from the worry the stress of never being good enough always being a failure never really taking accountability so when i was with the boys for three four days i was always last to leave i didn't go fucking home i didn't want to go home because i hated going home because i hated the way it felt but sitting with the brotherhood and just you were all losers together but it took me away from the method of thinking of failure pain misery and that feeling of that's why i just kept doing it because it was the feeling of just I'm, I'm achieving something. I was a, the clown. I was a circus act. But I enjoyed being the circus act because it was making me be different from who I was when I was alone. Do you know right, what you're saying is just... Mate, you ain't... I'm, I'm, I swear to you, you're older than me and, I'd, and I've got mad respect for you, yeah? I, and I would never, ever be talked down to you or patronising. But, mate, you, you've not even fucking born yet, man. If you knew... You don't, you, you have, <laughs> I'm excited for you, man. Because them feelings are possible without drugs and possible without acting a cunt. Them feelings are to do with inner peace and acceptance, mate. That's all it is. And if someone said that to me ages ago, I'd be like, shut up. But that's what that is. The inner peace is what gives you it. And the acceptance of, right, well, you know what? Maybe I'm happy where I am and realising we've got around you. The other thing is you're just so erratic all the time, isn't you? And you just want to get out of your headspace, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I know the feeling, mate, because I've done it. But now when I get out of that and you can look at it a bit wider, it's like, yeah, I did love them parties. I fucking loved it. I was always the last one to leave. I loved every minute of it. But I feel like that every day because I'm doing stuff which is, I feel like all I'm meant to be doing in my life. And I've got less pressure and I've got rid of all the, the, the baggage of every shit that I've got to deal with. Like, fuck the letterbox, I ain't open the letterbox, whatever, what's the worst can happen, man? And that feeling for me is, is priceless. And we get it from our parents because they've always, they was always struggling with stuff, weren't they? So we've then like took that from them and then we was like, oh, fucking hell, well, we better leave school, buy a house, go to college, like do this, do that, do that. And all these timelines on life, yeah? When you just let that go, mate, it's pure happiness. I swear to you, it really is, mate. I Why do you think not. your missus is stuck by you all these years? Because we're meant to be, isn't it? Meant to be. Like, it's, it's, do you think that's what makes a relationship? I think so. I think appreciating so. Yeah. the good times, but also understanding there's going to be bad. You have them from both sides. Yeah. You have them from both sides, man. And for me, the you got to accept it and you look at it both ways, yeah? Um, is the grass greener when you look at it as a man and you want to do uh, go out and you want to live life because you've heard your mates have, talking about it? Uh, every man's probably like, oh, fucking, I'd love to go out and, and, and be our woods for a little while. But mate, what about all the lonely times and, and things like that? And you always you need that thing to come home to. It's the main driving force, man. It's being able to 
provide for me is to be able to provide and be able to do my best for my family. And that that's why I feel like we work so well was Georgia accepts that from me. And she accepts that I'm gonna go through a lot of shit and I'm gonna have ups and downs. Like today is me for the last two years. Probably yeah, two years I've been like this. Um she's supported me through the worst and the, and the best. It don't mean we're always happy, mate. We have a lot of shit going on where we don't agree on stuff and we're, we want different stuff, but we know deep down we're, we're meant to be for each other. So you have to just get on with it, don't you? That's where I feel like it happens. What makes a strong relationship, especially in society now with divorce for it, through the roof, people not working at things, too much temptation, what do you think the secret is to try and keep a steady relationship? I don't know, I ain't been divorced yet. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I sort of accepted it as well, and that sounds mad. I was like, George, listen, if I'm like this forever, I accept, yeah, we'll probably have all our kids. I'll probably buy you an ass and you'll probably fuck me off. I'll probably, I get it, but I appreciate you now, yeah? I think the thing is, is with society again, isn't it? You feel like you have to rush. You feel like you have to have the hash. You get to 30 and you go, oh, I don't own a hash yet. Mate, as soon as you have a bit of ag and you go to court, they take the house off you. As soon as you, all these things that society told you you've got to do, they can take it off you. So like all that rush makes people feel like, well, I need to meet someone. I've got to get married. And I feel like you set all the wrong person, innit? Marriage is a pressure. There's no, you're signing to the government. I, I kind of don't know why yeah. people rush to do that. Back in the day, married at 16, 17, 18. I understand that people stuck with each other. For me, family life is everything. Mm -hmm. It's what, why we're on this planet is to connect with someone where you feel happy, but somebody needs to enhance your life. There's too mm -hmm. much fuckery now. I couldn't handle a missus who's bikinis and social media i just can't handle it i don't know if that's my mindset i know a lot of other people think like that i know but there's not a lot of value in men of female anymore because a lot of people struggle so they're not really bringing more value to the table and that's where i think the battle comes in as well because people are so confused what they should be in their roles in life everybody's different of course but it's just a fucking struggle to connect on a deeper level because everybody's chasing likes and views, including myself. Even though I talk about this, it's a contradiction again, like we speak about. I'm chasing a numbers game, but it's an electronic screen where it can make or break my day. It's fucking mad. Yeah, but you get over it, James, man. Don't don't forget, yeah? He's like, M -m you've had a false, full few years, man. It's gone f like bang. Yeah. You're in the middle of where I was last year, like when, when it does get a lot for you. And you, will, you get there and then you think yeah fucking hell it's worth it because you've done big things so don't be hard on yourself about that man but the thing the thing the thing with like the, the thing with georgia yeah is she'll kill me for saying this i've in the last two weeks what well, fucking hell two years i'm gonna say i am probably 90 percent of the time i've only seen her wear pajamas and i'm definitely not seeing her wear makeup not at all i've never ever like been late out of the house for George. Go, oh, I've got to sort my makeup out, or I've got to do this. I can't remember the last time Georgia put like a bikini picture on on Instagram and something like I had to be jealous of. I can't remember that. I, I, we've not got that as a relationship. I can't remember the last time that we had an argument about someone. But we just don't have it because she don't give me any reason to get any thought of anything like that. It's just straightforward. We know how it is. It's with and trust that creates the bond over the relationship. Yeah, so like, I know people like a bit of jealousy in a relationship. It's fucking dangerous. No, like, it's not healthy. Like, my, missus, my missus ain't wearing like, and I would, if she wants to go out and she wants to look fucking in a bikini and I'd be mad proud of her to go out and do that, but she wouldn't know. But motherhood changes people. Yes, it, it does. It changes people because once you become a, a mother or a father, especially mothers, it makes them see the whole world differently. For me, it takes them back to their true source and what they should be. And the woman, a best role for a woman on this planet for me is being a mother. Just the way they carry the baby, how their energy changes, mm -hmm. how their whole vibration changes, how the nutrients change, how mm -hmm. they. The, the umbilical cord feeds the baby nutrients and stem cells. Like it's fucking a beautiful thing. But everything is backwards from the day we are born. Women giving birth on their back, giving birth on their artificial lightning, coming out drugged up. Mm -hmm. Everything's going against gravity. They're cutting the umbilical cord, which is full of stem cells and nutrients. We're giving babies names, religions, football teams to support. Label, label, label before they've even spoken. So we're confused constantly because we're the old cheesy saying is divide and conquer everybody's arguing and fighting left wing Mad. right wing blue pill red pill who gives a fuck be the better person you can be and just try and help people as much as you can but again we're living in a society where it makes us change and it makes us see the world differently but that's why social media is there it's a tool to create chaos that's maybe what's, what's probably 
mine and Georgia's thing then, because Georgia, if you asked who the Prime Minister of the UK was, she wouldn't know. She wouldn't know. She wouldn't know any of that. Georgia, her mindset is every day is just to be as happy as she can. She don't get involved in anything. And she teaches my son like morally how she thinks he should be. She don't force him into nothing. That's how that's how Georgia is. My house is a bit mad compared to how you'd think it was. It's not like we don't like film stories of us together and that. We don't do none of that. I can't remember last time I took a photo of Georgia. We literally don't do any of that. So I think like that is probably the key to it. Is we ain't trying to show no one nothing. It is there. It is what it is. She's the mum to my, my little boy. She does an amazing job. And that makes me want to give her everything. And that's why I married her. Because I was against getting married. Because I was like, fucking hell, George. Things people fall out of love, da, da, da. But then at the same time, I was like, no, oh, fuck it. You deserved my same last name as your son. And you've you've done the, the everything ever for me. And it is what it is. Is there any prenup or anything? No, you mad. Never. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Never. Yeah. But hey, for we the, got married, the... I got married in Island and yeah, in the town well, hall, yeah. What was the plan? Was that planned or was that a spur of the moment kind of? No, mate, we had a bad year, yeah. And I was like, George, you know what? I think I've got a bit of ag coming. So we need to rearrange the wedding because it was in, supposed to be September. And I said, look, we're at the point now, we ain't gone like, inviting everyone. We can change it and it's just going to be, no one has to know. I was like, I think if we change it for the year after, let's look at doing that. And she was just accepted it and she really wanted this wedding. So I was like, wow. I was like, listen, if you all you want to do is have your day and get married, then let's do it. And then, of course, there's no pre or nothing because for me, she deserves everything I've got and I'll give her every single last piece of it. There ain't going to be no point, mate, where, where, for example, if we fall out of love, I'm going to start arguing who gets the ash. It's all hers. Yeah. She deserves every single thing that she gets, that girl. That's everything. why I asked. I knew you would have said that anyway, but I was just obviously... No, no, and mate, you know what? It always went through that. my head when I was younger, when I was... But yeah. I had nothing because, Carl, well, I ain't going to work all this time for someone to take it off me. And I'm like, well, I'd rather her take it off me than fucking me spunk it all by losing my head. At least she'll probably use it in the right way. But no, I don't have any of that feeling whatsoever. I'm like, I'm, mate, I'm just here for now. I'm not thinking about what's happening in years to come. I'm here for right now. This is my moment. This is my time. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure it's the best time ever. Yeah? I've had enough time of me fucking moping and groping around and worrying about shit. This is my time. Yeah? And I'm going to make it a fucking movie. And every bit of shit that happens to me along the way, these court cases, when I'm thinking, oh, these people are turning on me. Oh, I think is, oh, I'm going to get to play them in the film. So I think... Because if I didn't have this story, it'd be a shit fucking film, wouldn't it? So all I'm thinking now is that. And mate, I love life and I'm, I'm so, I appreciate every single person around me right now, the good and the bad. And I'm just excited for the next steps, man. And what, what is meant for me will happen. And that is it. I'm not going to fight against anything. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to get on with it. And for me, life's beautiful, man. And it, it takes a long time and a lot of pain to realise it. So yeah, no preem up. Georgia can fuck off whenever she wants. She knows that. Yeah, it's all hers. And just as long as we're in the moment together and we're happy, that's it. Mm -hmm. What else matters? See, when you got tested for ADHD, was there any other tests for anything else? Did they go through yeah. a list? Yeah, well, I think they have. Autism, I, 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 fucking I, I, I bipolar. I think I'm a little bit autistic, yeah. I'm scared to go, mate, case I take every fucking Look, list. James, I'm going to be honest, yeah. Mm. The, 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 the medication and knowing what's wrong with me works mostly for me to be able to concentrate at work. It doesn't stop my creativity and it definitely doesn't stop me being off my edge. It I think I'm a bit worse actually, yeah? But what it does do is it let, makes me just think before I do things. With the ADHD, I was just off the handle all the time. It don't make me happier. It doesn't make me, it doesn't, it ain't like me taking a bit of speed. I wouldn't mind a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like I'm taking a pill in the morning and I'm lighting space out of my head just gives me the, I can focus. So then with me being able to focus on what's in front of me, I'm not turning left or right constantly. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'd see a parking space, but then I'd be focusing on the sand over there. It just levels me out. But in terms of like um, the diagnosis, I understand that, that I've got an imbalance in my brain, yeah? And I'm like, all right, sweet, get over it. So fucking who cares? It's a fucking superpower. Because if I hyper focus on something, I can, literally work through things like you have never seen and if i didn't get help when i got help i would never have been able to support georgia during this miscarriage 
Never. I wouldn't have been able to do it because I would have made it about me. But with me getting help, I understood so much more about myself so I could support Georgia. And I'm really proud of how I supported her during this time. Really proud of myself. I didn't once make it about me and make myself a victim. I might have had a little cry here and there to people close to me, but I made it about Georgia because Georgia was needed the help this time. So if I didn't go through the stuff that gave me the diagnosis, I would never have been able to handle it. So it was meant to be. I would never have been able to sit in a courtroom for five minutes before. I'm there for eight hours and I can sit there and can take everything that's going on. So don't please don't think anyone, yeah, like you're going to get tested for ADHD and you all of a sudden become happy. It's so much more than that. The happiness is from within, as I've been saying. But if you can't focus and there's ways of getting help, do it. But then the other thing I'll, I'll really say is drinking um, fizzy drinks and all this processed food and that is fucking no good for you. Like, you have come downs on it, left, right, and center. Stay away from the come downs. I couldn't tell you, I don't drink fizzy drinks. I drink water, that's it. Water, uh, I'll have a coffee or a tea, and I don't really get come downs from none of that stuff. As soon as I start putting sugar into my body, it fucks me. It plays with my, my, my body. So after learning all that stuff, there's natural ways of, of getting dopamine. You don't need to just take tablets to make you focus. You might not have it as bad as me. The cold water therapy really helped me because it was giving me a natural dopamine release, but it weren't enough for me still. So yeah, don't, I don't want anyone watching this thinking he's telling you the right way to do it is this, because it isn't. Like I, I wouldn't, if, if my son's got ADHD, I'm not gonna make him take medication, it's not gonna happen. I want him to learn his body himself, and then he can decide when he's older if he wants to basically do something that can make him a little bit calmer. But that's my son's decision, he does it. Is it hereditary? Yeah, 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 so I've got my dad tested, he's got it as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm gonna get tested. You know I'm gonna, you're a fucking you know what? jinx, bro. You know, what? you know what? Yeah, it made me accept so much about my life because I knew. Look, Did you understand your dad more? Yes, mate. We are so much closer. Because I went, wow, I felt bad, man. I thought, <laughs> mate, all them times that things were going on, and I, I used it against him. Yeah, I've never had the right to do so because he was he was suffering with what I've been going through. So it's not only me. I'm not the only victim, man. A lot of people go through this shit day to day, what I went through. And my dad's been doing it for 60 years, the poor fucker. <laughs> so now I feel a bit bad. I feel like I have to look after him because I often resented him for a few years. I want to punch his head in a lot of the time. But now, well, me and him will be having a conversation. I'll just look at him and he'll look at me. He'll go, let's not go there. And he'll walk out. He's never done that before. Never. He's a different man. He ain't taking any, 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 any um, tablets, nothing, because he don't really need to because he's gone too far. But he'll tell you, fucking hell, he half knows when he's gonna flip and he understands it when I'm gonna flip. Which, so we've got a better relationship now because we understand each other. People will work with me and a lot of them have went and done research on it. It made me really happy because they know what the switches are for me to lose my temper and why I'm doing it and the, the emotional stuff I'm going through. So that was like winning a lottery because I think, well, people are actually taking the time out to understand how my mind works and our relationships are so much different now. Mm -hmm. So if you're a partner of someone who's going through it, maybe read up on it a little bit to understand that they they have got push, pushing points and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, it's good. What's your plans for the future? Um, it is to take it as it comes, um, build gradually, enjoy every moment of it, build a legacy. I'm building something now f to leave to my son and daughter. So whatever I'm building now is for them. So I'm going to make sure it's done perfectly. I'm going to spend my time doing it. I'm not going to, I don't have any bad feelings to anyone. I, like, no matter what's happened in my life, I forgive everyone. It's pure forgiveness. I, it don't matter what's happened. It don't matter if it was last week. It don't matter if I've been in court with you. I've got no bad feeling. So I'm free from all of that. So I'm going to go and build my life, man. And this is what I wanted. I wanted to be free. I'm free now. So... I might come back in two years and go, fucking, I've made the same mistake. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm now, now, sit, now I've made my business is fucking, I'm another nutter. But for me, the plan is to just to, to gradually build and not, 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 not like, I'm not negotiating my peace with no one. And the peace comes first and then the results will follow. And I honestly feel like I'm going to, I'm going to do something, which is fucking, the story starts now. Wait, what's your biggest life lesson so far? Well, oh, fucking, I've had a few of them, mate. Uh, this uh, 
And I really do appreciate James. You've not prompted me on this court thing, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of people. That, no, no, yeah. no. But I do. I appreciate that because you could have made me come out of all kinds of madness. Because you know I would have said it, but I know I know what I can and can't say. But I'm going to be honest, y'all. My biggest life lesson is I'm bored with people who meant saying it to me before, man. And money does a lot of fucking mad things to y'all. So just make sure when I've got relationships with people, it's for the right reasons. And yeah, it's, shit can turn on you very quick. How do you learn how to trust if people are trying to fuck you over and take you to court? How does that, does that make you better, enhance going into the next venture or does yeah. it make you wary? Mate, mate, I don't make the same mistake twice. And I've never lost anything. I wasn't willing to give. Remember that. I'm s still as switched on as I ever was 10 times more. And I've gone through this and I've learned law. I've learned, I made a lot of mistakes at the same time, man. I'm not completely the guy that's innocent. Of course I made mistakes, man. I was probably really hard to deal with for most of the time. Of course I was. I was so ambitious. I was probably my way or the highway. I get that. So I understand that. So my life lessons is I need to listen to people and I need to give them the, the right to have an opinion. I don't mean I have to listen to it, but... In terms of trusting people is, look, you can't just, you get bit by one dog, yeah? It don't mean you have to be wary of every single one around you, man. A lot of it is the way you approach things, yeah? Mm -hmm. So for me, is as I said, I'm, I don't lose things I ain't willing to give. So when people come into my life, I know that they're there for certain reasons. I'm very, very, very good at being able to um, assess people of why they're here and what they're here for. I've done, never really made any mistakes in this. I knew we was going to go where we've gone here. I always knew. Always knew. But uh, you, there is good people out there, man. You don't live life with a chip on your shoulder let everyone's out that's a dog yard and no one wants to see you in because that is fucking bollocks, mate. That is so much bollocks. Everyone wants to see you in. It's just a load of wankers that don't. Like, when I put something out, the amount of support and love I get from people is insane. 1,500 comments on a picture of people telling me how proud they are me. They don't want to see you fail. That's a load of shit. You don't have to go through life thinking everyone's against you because it's not. People do like seeing good people win. So I'm not going to have my guard up through life now. I'm just going to, as I said, I don't give away anything that I'm not willing to like mm -hmm. to give up myself. What's your daily routine like now? Because I know you're doing a lot of running. You've always done fitness anyway, but I've this is the best fit. I've seen. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. Do you know what? I think, I think people are surprised at how fucking big and Wrong yard anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I remember yeah. getting a picture next to you and I'm thinking, fuck me, I get yeah, slaughtered, yeah, yeah, yeah. mate. <laughs> you know what? I feel um <clears throat> I've I'm really enjoying getting back to training. So like I went to Miami the other week and me and my, my guy was like, when I watched the sun come up and when I done a uh, 20k run. And for me, my fitness ambition is to be able to go for a 20k if I wanna go and lift 120 kilo can do a bit of everything just to keep the mind ticking so I can not just be obsessed with things. So like my routines now is I wake up at half four every day with no alarm. Um, sometimes, and I, this I know I've got my ambition back really strong is sometimes I wake up at 3 a.m. and I'm so fuming it's not time to get up and work. So I get up at half four, I get in the gym for, uh, I, I get up, I probably have, it takes me half hour to get out of bed sometimes because I'm just, I do a bit of work in, in, in bed. Um, I go to the gym, I have a sauna, Try and do half hour on a sauna every day, so 45 minutes. Um, I have a cold plunge. I've not really been doing the water theory too much. But then I just go and train, and I will use it as my meditation now. It's a very, very nice part of going to the gym and training heavy, and then just breathing as you're doing it. Um, then when I finish there, I'm in work. I don't work mad hours no more. Probably leave work four or five. Was that a struggle for you? What's that, mate? To work so f to, to chill out a bit. I know we spoke about um, it, but to kind of look, no, give the reins over a bit. No, because I think there are a lot of time when you're working, you know, thing is you're trying to prove a point to everyone. Not that, That's what it is. You're going to tell everyone how hard you're working all the time. So for me, I'm like, I go to work and I make positive decisions that basically make money for me, yeah? And by me doing so, if I get to four o'clock and it's saying needs resolving, I'll resolve it the next day, man. How many hours of sleep do you get? Eight. Every uh, like, yeah, I, it's I, important. Yeah, See, yeah, when you're yeah. at the start of the journey, fucking 4 a.m. club, 3 a.m. club. It ruins you. S don't sleep and fucking work for three days. It's all it's bullshit. Shit. It's you all know the stuff dollars. you see out there, yeah? These people, they're such... This, listen, that's why I, I still like doing podcasts and telling my story because it's all right to be normal, you know? 
It's very fun to be normal. You don't have to get up at four o'clock, eat a steak, do this, do that, do that. Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> shut up. Like, the, them sort of people are petrified to live anyway. They're, they're doing it because, like, I'm not putting anyone down, but, like, like, you're allowed to sleep. You don't got to get up. But you're only doing it to tell people you're doing it. Just, uh, that's the way I look at it. I'm going to be honest, y'all. Yeah. All these people, they're making you feel like if you don't get up at four o'clock and you don't have 20 eggs and you don't do this and that, then you're a failure. How does that work out? I made most of my money by getting up at eight o'clock. I'm going to be honest, y'all. Yeah. I did. Cause, but then now, nah, I got a bed around... My little boy puts me in bed at the minute. I probably got a bed about eight o'clock and just wind down. I sleep all the way through. I never worry about anything. I don't lose sleep over anything to do with business. And I wake up at half four and I'm ready to go for the day. And I wake up every single morning happy. I've not woken up, since I've been able to like find this inner peace, I've not woke up once in a bad mood. I'm always wake up happy till some cunt fucks it up. Yeah, it's but, always some deals, isn't it? But yeah, it's like the, the, the running and the ice baths weren't what was making me happy. It was getting up in the morning and having the routine, having the ADHD, you need a routine. Mm -hmm. I've got the routine and I feel good. Sometimes I'm dieting. At the moment, I'm not. Like, I'll see fucking some recipe online. Next thing you know, we're eating it in the office. I'm eating fucking churros. I'm eating fucking ice cream. I'm eating pie and mash. I'm eating kebabs. Like, but I train really hard and I feel like I've got a good balance. How many workers do you have? <sighs> Over all my businesses, quite a few. Many shops do you have? Many mallet shops. Stock it. No, yeah. no, no. We ain't got mallet shops. We've got a stockist. A stockist. My peak was, I think, 200 or 300. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? It's like, yeah, but it's ever. still unbelievable. You yeah, know, it was to, good. To, Listen, I'm really, have it everywhere I'm, really, I'm, really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really proud mm. of, um, of where, where, I, where I went over the last few years, man. I'm really proud of getting there. I'm really proud of knowing when it was the right time to step away from it. I'm really proud of building new ventures. Do I think that I can take things to the stars and further? Mate, put it this way, yeah? There was a time when I sat there and I went to Georgia. George, I don't think like, I'm going to be a billionaire. She went, why not? I went, number one, because I feel like I'm a bit generous and I, I, I see the best in people and end up fucking giving a lot away. But the other thing is, is because I feel like to become a billionaire, you have to invent something and you have to do something that changes people's lives. And I don't feel like I can do it. Next thing you know, I've fucking started this brand off, which is... It's like, nah, in the UK, it don't probably seem what people think it is, but in America, man, you've got to see it, it's crazy. Like, I've, I've come up with a concept which is insane, and I, I'm the only person that can do it in the world. Yeah, I said to you four or five years ago that it would be a billion pound product. Mm. We got, we'll get there, but it'll just whether be for different, it'll whatever, be for different yeah, streams. Whatever it is, it's just, but for what you've done, what you've achieved, it's unbelievable. And like you say, I'm always proud of you. I'm always written it, behind man. the scenes. I'm always messaging from time to time. Might not speak for six months, but when it speak, it's always the same as where it left off. And I appreciate Positive, it. Positive, love, honesty. And listen, we always talk about our struggles, and, but we are fucked up. But that's what makes us great. That's why people connect with us at a different level, because, okay, it makes them seem as if they're not alone, which is so important, because we all feel lonely. I could be surrounded by a million people, mate, and I would still feel the loneliest man in the room, but yet I'll be the happiest at that moment, because that's the act of the showman. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So what you've came through, what you've overcome from the reality star, to then you've came away from that brand now and that label, which is a beautiful thing, because I know that made you as well. That took the steps from then taking you to where you are. All these yeah, steps, I, all I that pain, it. all that trauma, all the happiness, all the fucking great things. You've achieved so much. It's, it's so young, man. You should be fucking proud James, of yourself. You know what? Someone said to me, yeah, I was speaking to someone and he was a billionaire and he went out. I was speaking to him, he went, how old are you? I went, 31. He went, whoa. He said, that's what you get at 51, 52 or 60. When you're about to retire, you realise what you've realised. You realise it so young. It's mad. But now, nah, I'm going to be honest, I feel like I owe it to tell the story, to tell people there's so much more to life. You don't have to just be so intense. I don't honestly feel like my purpose is that. My purpose is to spread the message and I'm relatable, I'm normal, I'm nothing special, I'm the same as what you are, same as everyone. We come from the same background, right? The majority of people come from the same background as us, but we just don't take no very kindly, do we? And we feel like there's more to give. And But I feel like I want to spread both messages. I want to let people know they can go out and achieve whatever they want, yeah? But I also want to do the other one to say, just make sure you're happy when you're doing it, because otherwise it's not worth doing. And that's why... Yeah, I feel like I'm the richest man in the world right now. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I feel absolutely 
I'm like a fucking trillionaire because I've got everything I need, man. I've got everything I need. I've got, I can pick up the phone and be around some good people. I've got my family. I'm doing all right with my money. I'm spreading a positive message. I feel fucking amazing. Yeah. I'm absolutely amazing. Let's talk about your new product before we finish up. Like, How did that come about and where do you see this going? I know you say it's a family thing, but... It was it come along at a time when I was like basically searching and when you when you search for things you find them, yeah. And I had this mad situation where I lost I lost some friends, yeah, and I basically felt like it was sank in my house and I was like, oh, a bit freaked out. So I call um, like a psychic friend to like sage my house. Mm -hmm. And when she left, she left a crystal in my office and I didn't know it was there. I'd never noticed it. Anyway, fast forward two years, I'm getting a reading, trying to work out like what my next steps are. And the woman's like, wow, that crystal in front of you. You're gonna do something with that? And I was like, what crystal? I was like, what that? So then I searched this crystal and it shows you what it does. And it brings wealth, prosperity, good energy. It makes you believe in yourself. A lot of people, like the, the Chinese emperors used to put in their hats, it's huge in Chinese culture. They give it to kids for them to, to calm down mentally. And then when I started reading up on it, I was like, wow, this is actually everything I need right now in a, like in a crystal. And I was a bit skeptical about it, but I thought, well, do you know what, yeah? If I know that's what this crystal does, well, put it in my pocket, and every time I touch it, it's just gonna remind me what I'm destined to do. So then I started carrying it, but I started losing them. So I was thinking, fucking hell, there's gotta be another way of that. And the next thing, you know, it's in the shoe. Fucking Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your granny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there's, listen, there's a bigger, more technical story behind it, but it was about how can I spread how good I feel to people? Is it, I've, 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 I want to be able to tell people how to do things without them having to go through this shit. And it's just one of them things where I thought, I want to spread this positivity. I'm in a quite a negative place, feel positive, and it was born. And, mate, there's no limits to it. There's no limits of something. When you invent something, man, that's the one it's, it's insane where can people buy the product online only and i want to stick to that to be honest with you because i want to be able to build communities i want to be able to give people free sessions and how they can manifest it's not just a sneaker brand this is how you can it's a positive change this is what this is for me i just know how to tell my story through sneakers because that's how I, what, I, what i know yeah but giving people, like we, we do things weekly where we're like, we'll just pick someone, we'll just give them money. So that says, if we feel the energy right towards it, we'll do it. We buy journals and give them out to people. We don't want anything back from it. But I just love the thing of being able to say, I've got a part of making someone feel better. Because when, when I was done, that's all I wanted is someone to do that to me. So if I've been given this chance and I feel this good and I feel like I've been basically reborn, yeah? Then I, wanna, I want everyone to feel the same. So then obviously I'm very good at making uh, shoes, as you know, and I've ended up hitting the market really well. Um, it's completely different to Mallet as well, which is, means that I can have two businesses. The Mallet customer isn't necessarily a Citroen customer. It's more like ages 34 to an older, because that's where I feel like that's the age where people are trying to, to do better self in their life. They start looking within. In, when you're young, you don't give a shit, do you? It's mm. just like, well, what, whatever. When you get a little bit older, you start destined for more. Me and you, definitely. All this cold water stuff and hiking. For me, I wanted to spread a bit of positivity and I've just done it through shoes and it's really worked. Yeah. So I don't feel like there's any... It will be endless. It for will any, be absolutely endless. For anybody watching, Tom, and it's maybe in a life of struggle right now, what advice would you have for them? I was you. Look at me now. It gets better, man. It gets better. It, it, it ain't over until it's over, man. It don't matter. Listen, and I say this laughing because life's funny, man. When you're there and you, mate, you're so worried about what's around the corner and it comes and it's like, it was bad, but fuck it, it weren't that bad. You sort of see the light in it. You're like, things happen, innit? It's like, so no matter how bad it feels in that moment, what I've learned is, is it'll pass. So will the goodness. But when you go through the shit, there is always light. And it's just the way you deal with it. And listen, I can't preach to everyone because people got different things going on in their life. And I really understand it because I have seen a lot of fucking madness in my time. But when you feel like it's over, it's not. That's when you have to start working. That's when you really need to dig in. Because that's when you really start learning. It's like that, that 
rock bottom is where the, you grow so much there because you've got nothing else to lose, man. That for me is just, just hang in there and just push because you deserve the best. You deserve to be happy. If, I, if you're unhappy in your job, I ain't saying just fucking throw the papers and leave and then, and then, and then not be able to get your, like live, but just make sure that you're doing things for you. Make sure you're doing little things to make you happy. Don't just sit there depressed about it. Try and make it better because it will get better within time. So if you're unhappy with your job, nothing's going to fix you. You need to change it yourself and you need to take the steps to do so. And you should believe in yourself because anything's possible. Well, I think we're living proof of that, ain't we? Yeah. How do you feel coming on today again, part two? Familiar. <laughs> familiar, familiar. <laughs> but more, I feel, I feel a lot more grown up and I feel... I, there was so much I'd done on that, it told that part of my story. That for me was Tommy Mallet. My new name's Tommy Fordham. This is Tommy Fordham. Mm -hmm. like I've just come into a whole new era of my life. I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm so excited to show people what I can actually do. And I really do hope I can help people along the way because I'm, I know how shit it can get. But people already know what you can do. Like I say, from what you've came from, I will always have your back. I will always show support. Appreciate it. Like I say, I'm proud of you. And you just, like you say, when the it turns into the butterfly and the butterfly spreads his wings. We'll be here in four or five years. We could be talking more madness. Who fucking knows? But all we can do is be the best version that we can be. And I respect the fact that you stood up to the plate, made some changes that you were scared your whole life to then be a better husband, a better father, 100%. a better person all the way around. So nothing but fucking love and respect Thank for you, you, brother. Would you like to finish up on anything else? Just keep pushing. When it's against you, just keep pushing. Don't fucking give in, man. Do not give in. Because look, if I give in, I won't be able to build what I've got. And that's the only reason that I feel like this success is here. It's because I will not give in. And I stand up for what I think is right. And that's it. I appreciate you every Love time. You, appreciate you, you so much. Can't wait to see what you, you do for the future, mate. You yeah. know I'm always there if you need me. Really appreciate it, James. God Thank bless, you, man. Bro. Thank you. <laughs>